The following is a Thorpe TV production brought to you in cooperation with Jack Thorpenson. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ranch Cooking with Mr. Holster. Let's have a big round of applause for that unique cooking guy, <laughs> Mr. Holster! Jack, yeah, well, he's unique, Jack. Cooking guy. <laughs> Mr. Holster. Oh, Mr. Holster. Hey, that's me. Hey, howdy, Barge. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> Mr. Holster, and, and we're kind of rained out today, so I thought, why not take you to lunch with Mr. Holster? So here we are. This is what we're having today. I got a couple of Highland ribeye steaks out, plus we got a nice beer. Let's start with the beer. We'll put the steaks aside. We're going to talk about the cattle we raise here on the ranch, but first... Let's pop the top on this one. I'll get get the old pocket watch out. Yeah. You can tell time and pop the top. As Machine Gun Kelly would say, pop the top on this one. We just did. We got an IPA. It's called Thumper American IPA. Get that so you can see that. 6.8% alcohol by volume. It's out of Wisconsin, Monroe, Wisconsin by the Rhinelander Brewing Company. I, I really like this stuff. So we'll pour that and get the show started. It's really uh, kind of a tasty little IPA and not all that expensive. It costs about the same as Michelob Light or Miller Light. And I really do enjoy it. You ready guys and gals? To the sunny slopes of long ago. Ah, that doesn't heat you up and cool you down all at the same time. Yeah, I like this stuff. This is what we're having for lunch. Jack and I, we're having a couple ribeye steaks out of uh, a Highland Steer. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to talk about the Highland cattle we raise here. We actually raise the offspring are pretty much all... A 50-50 mixture of Hereford and Highland. We do have some that are quarter Hereford and Highland that drop. And it, it kind of depends on who the cow is that's being crossed with that, that nice, beautiful, pulled Hereford named Dozer we have now. And before we had a cross between a Hereford, pulled Hereford, and a Highland cow. So that's, see, that's where the percentages are kind of kind of tricky. And, and we also do still a little bit of artificial insemination on some of the straight 100% highlands. So we have steers that drop that are 100% highland too. And that's what we got here today. And the highland cattle I want to talk about, if you're not familiar with them, they come from Scotland, the Scottish highland. They were brought into this country fairly heavily after the late 1800s where they had the just horrible winter that killed off all the cattle. If you've ever seen the one of my favorite actors, Tom Selleck, his, his made-for-TV movie, Monty Walsh, you'll know what I'm talking about. And after that, they brought in a lot of Highland cattle to cross with the cattle they had to make them hardier. Because Highland cattle have, they have big horns, and they have very, very heavy, thick, furry coats. And the furry coats keep them warm up to temperatures of negative 40. They don't need to come inside and seek shelter till the temperature drops below negative 40. And I live way up north near the Canadian border and yeah, it gets really cold and windy up here in the winter time and that's why we have the Highland cattle and cross them with a the Hereford. The Highland cattle is unique compared to a Hereford or an Angus because it takes a lot longer for the the cow to mature before you can butcher it. As a result, the meat is very, very tasty and tender. Totally different than I'm sure anything you've ever tasted. The downside to it, but it's an upside too, and I'm going to talk about that right now, is the ribeye steaks and the T-bones are not the best out there. I would prefer to have a Hereford ribeye all day long versus a Highland, but the worst cut in a Hereford would be what? Well, the round steak's pretty chewy and tough, yeah. But in a Highland, it's it you could cut it with a butter knife and it melts in your mouth. It's the best round steak 
most incredible round steak I've ever had in my life. And the, the sirloin steak is, oh my, yes, it is so good. And the tenderloin steaks, oh my gosh, just incredible. And the, the taste is very unique because it takes that Highland cow 30 months to mature before it can be butchered, where an Angus or a Hereford, they'll be butchering them at 18 months. All our cattle are grass-fed, no, no antibiotics, no grain. They're just pure, organic, grass-fed cattle. And that's what this is right here. And if you'll notice, th these are ribeye steaks. That's why we're having them for lunch, because that's not the best cut. <laughs> and it's very, very lean meat, very healthy for you. But I, I'm, not, I'm not that big on, oh, we got to get rid of all the fat, no. I like the Hereford because it's hearty, and I cross it with a Hereford. Highland because it's very hearty, and I cross it with a pulled Hereford, and we end up with a 50-50 split when they drop, and you get the best of both worlds, and I think just a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic eating experience from the, from the round steak all the way through the ribeye. This, however, we do keep crossing through artificial insemination are highlands so we keep up the stock and we can pick and choose and cull out the bad ones and keep keep something coming up from the bottom because you know just like everything in life they they run out of time and that's it so we got to keep look to the future and here we have one that that dropped as a steer so we're going to have that for lunch we're going to cook it here in the lodge, and the lodge is a building. It was the original building here on the property. There was nothing else when I bought this property, and it was basically a machine shop. And we've turned it into the lodge, and we built the other buildings. We built a barn for our machinery, and some stables are in the barn. And this we turned into, because it was insulated and heated, we turned this into basically a... Lounge area, so when we go out horseback riding, we come in and we can keep all our we keep all our tack in here in the humidity controlled area. That's where the tack room is, and we have tables, chairs, and even a couple sofas and wood burning stoves. We can come in here after a ride. We can have a few beers and relax and talk about the performance of our horses. Along with that, we kind of got a makeshift kitchen in here and stove. And I'm telling you all this because don't get upset when you see how dirty the place is. <laughs> because, yeah, we raise cattle and horses, and, and this is not a house. This is, yeah. So, you know, bear with me. I, I didn't clean anything up. We're going to fry these up. And because it's lunch, all I'm going to do is put salt and pepper on them, a little olive oil, put them in a cast iron pan with a little lard, and fry them up. Nothing fancy. If I were making dinner, I would take the time to get some nice garlic, slice it very thin, a nice sweet onion, slice it very thin, put a little lard and a little butter in a cast iron pan, bring the heat up slowly, put that in there, get it so it is translucent, then bring the heat up to full heat, drop the steaks in and cook them for about a minute and a half to two minutes on each side and you'll be done. Today we're just going to throw them in there with a little salt and pepper and, and olive oil. So let's go out there to where the stove is and get to work so Jack and I can have ourselves a steak. First we're going to take our steaks, get a little salt, a little pepper, a little olive oil. case a lot of olive oil. Then we'll do the other side. Salt, pepper, I like pepper. And because I got so much olive oil on it, it's all over the pan, all I'll do is flip it over and it'll pick up the olive oil on the other side. And I'll wipe my hands off a little bit here. I've got this cast iron pan right here. I'm bringing it to heat. I'm going to take this little bag I keep in the freezer. 
it's got a little lard. I just go like that, melt a little lard in there. It's actually a little, little, eh, yeah, that's fine. And a little butter. I'm going to put butter in, but I think I will. There we go. We just bring it up to heat. We're going to crank it up full, full temperature. Got a little spatula here. Nothing to this, guys. You just give that cast iron, and while you're waiting for the cast iron pan to heat up, <laughs> perfect opportunity. To pour yourself a little more thumper. And then drink a little more thumper while you're waiting. If it starts smoking and you waited too long, there it is, it's starting to smoke. Time to get going. We take these beautiful steaks and just Pop them in the pan. Can't be any easier than that. Oh. Yeah, not the best cut of steak for a Highland, but boy, does it smell good. Jack and I are going to eat like kings for lunch today. Get the old pocket watch. Twofold. Look at this. We can actually use it now to check the time. Leave it in there for, I'm going for a minute and a half today, judging by the thickness of these. Okay, that's been a minute and a half. Now we're going to flip them. Another minute and a half, and we'll plate them up and dig in. Well, there you go, pards. A fantastic steak. Ribeye steak. Me and Jack are going to enjoy ourselves. Thanks for tuning in. Before I leave you, I'm having a contest right now where you can win a $350 gift certificate to Brownells. All you got to do to get in the contest is, number one, be a subscriber. Number two, like this video. And number three, in the comments section down below, tell me what you're thinking and tag it with Jack. Because Jack's the greatest guy in the world. Till next time. Go out and stay safe.